Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the CIA's Venus update. Um, I'm here today with Ariel Goodman, um, and we are going to discuss the Venus star point in Libra that is coming up in October. Um, so welcome, Ariel. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, and thank you all for watching it. I'm always so happy to be part of the CIA Venus star point master classes and this is truly going to be a ma another master class and probably um, in the continuing series of uh, Venus star point um, that's teachings. right <laughs> well we've been doing it you know for about what since 2017 or even before yeah we started with Aries we started with Aries um, and we've kept up the tradition that we are uh, the, these these sessions we're doing today um, or that I'm recording at the moment <laughs> um, are to introduce something that um, we are doing a master class on the Venus star Libra because it's just as you, as you were saying Ariel we've gotten together so many times and we've had these amazing sessions of you know kind of what we bring together from the research about the star and the cycle um, and the movement and this one is really quite 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 it's the first time we're discussing a, a star point change, aren't we? Yeah, right. We won't do so it. So this is pretty, this is big, you know. This yeah. is big. This is yeah. big. Um, so I'm going to share my screen so you can get a better idea of what we're talking we're going about. To be talk, this is a part one of the free panel. We couldn't do a panel with all of us together, which includes Kelly Hunter. Gemini Brett and Adam Gainsburg as well, because we're all in different time zones. It just didn't come together this week that we could all do it, do it at once. And it's probably a good thing because there's so much to talk about. Um, and we've got a recording that we were going to add to this with Kelly um, a little bit later. So hang in there. Um, so yes, the Venus star point happening for the first time in Libra. What does it mean? What can we expect? And how we can embrace this shift? Um, Ariel, I mean, it's probably something you've been looking at for a long time because knowing that there's a star point shift that happens. Again, we weren't doing this in the 80s when the last you know, shift happened, were we? Were you aware of a star point shift? No. Um, so again, for astrologers, this is a really kind of big thing to contemplate I think as well yeah I don't think anybody in the astrology world or anywhere on the planet was aware of this Venus star and its movement and back in the 80s or 90s it, yeah. it just really first came to light to some of us um no the pentagram of Venus was definitely known about and written about sparsely here and there uh, and the retrogrades, but mostly they were using the um, heliacal rise, you know, as in, as in the shamanic um, astrology, um, like like Daniel Jamario School of Shamanic Astrology was using the heliacal rise as the point at which Venus, you know, but mapping the five points of the five consecutive heliacal rises. So we still got the five pointed star. But what I was working with when I was researching that and somebody else, um, um, I think Erin Sullivan wrote a book on retrogrades and she was working with the pentagram of Venus with the five retrograde cycles. Um, but I looked at that and I thought, you know, you can't set your clock to a heliacal rise. There's just different it's viewing. Varies. Yeah. You know, clouds and mountains and fog and, you know, everything in the way of really seeing Venus. And um, we were in the Mayan country in Chichen Itza for the Venus transit of 2012. And we were all anticipately anticipating and excitedly waiting to see that. And of course, in the Mayan country, I don't know how they tracked Venus so well all those centuries ago, but... You know, Mountain. there's such thick, such thick cloud, you know, oh, fog mm -hmm. and cloud cover. You know, it was it was it was nearly impossible, but certainly we felt it. But so I'm, I mapped 
what my start point is about is the Kazemi, which is the actual conjunction of Venus and the Sun, which always in the retrograde cycle, it always happens at the midway point. You know, the Sun and Venus are moving towards one another. They kiss, they make their embrace, and then Venus keeps going that way retrograde and the Sun's going that way forward. And, and you know, they're stretching out, but then Venus eventually turns forward again, but it takes her all the way to catch up with the sun until the next Kazemi, which then becomes the direct, you know, evening star. So because you can time the Kazemis, the conjunctions, precisely anywhere in the world. Um, and I, th I thought that midpoint, that changeover from morning to evening or evening to morning phase was was really essential to looking at the core of the core meaning of what the Venus star is to us and how it's embedded in our systems. Yeah. Well, we've definitely embedded it into our systems and we've been following <laughs> it for a long time. And I think we've like fractals, it's spread it's spread from a lot of work that we've also done and collectively done as well. So so this is the first session I'll be talking to Ariel more. And then um, we have a live session as well coming up um, on these date, September the 1st at 3 p.m. PDT. And you can register to join that um, as well. So, um, or just look for part one and part two of these things to bring them together. Um, and this is all in regard to we're having a symposium. So this is a paid symposium coming up on October the 2nd with Ariel, Adam, Kelly Hunter, Gemini Brett and myself um, in, in, you know, five incredible presentations. Four of them are on one day and then I'll be doing a Q&A and a chart example um, version because we've had so many let's say, um, devotees to this that have come and studied with us as well, that we really want to talk about our own charts and what's happening. Because this transition from the point that's been in Scorpio for all our lives now, you know, sort of peaks into Libra um, is a really interesting thing to contemplate. Ariel, have you contemplated that in your own sort of chart at this point? I'm sure you have, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For some people, it will stay in the same house for them because um, if you're using yeah. unequal houses or not whole sign houses, you know you'll you'll have uh, one house that combines both Libra and Scorpio, um, which is yeah. true. But if you're actually using whole sign houses or or something like that, you will really see and you know you will really see and feel the shift from one yeah. house to another. And I think that I don't know that because this is a um, the end of an era, and that's basically why I felt like um, Venus Star Rising, the name that came to me for Venus Star Rising was a new star is rising. And, you know, a new star point will be rising. And actually over the next 20 years, another new star will be rising. And we leave Aries and go into Pisces but if we're you know still around in 20 years to talk about it um, we've got another big shift coming but we're in a transitional period now anyway yeah so, so we can see uh, just in this graphic that um, you know the star point that's pointing around 29 Libra there has the star the star moves backwards slowly over time so it's the first one that dips into Libra and um, so, so again, the the other speakers are going to have these incredible um, sessions that we'll go into more briefly as I interview them about it in these free sessions. Um, Ariel, we uh, have this amazing sort of legacy as we were talking about. And when we put them all together, of how much, how many masterclasses we have had that have all been about four and five hours long. <laughs> you can look on the um, CIA website under masterclasses and symposiums if you want to, let's say, study this a lot further. Um, a lot of things yeah. we're not going to cover again because we do have 
many free YouTube videos on the Venus Star um, web um, YouTube channel. What's it called, Ariel, again? It's the official Venus Star Point YouTube channel. There you go. So go ahead and, it's and like loaded it. loaded <laughs> with instructional videos. And Julia and I and Gemini are on a couple of those when we were talking about I think it was a Capricorn star, the Leo star. Uh, yes, cast, a Capricorn, you know. a Leo. Um, the Venus, these, yeah. Even though these are past dated, like we say Aries 2017 and Capricorn 2018, and you think, oh, well, that's that's already gone. It's really not because the Venus star, every four years, it repeats. It comes back to the same sign. And every eight years, of course, it comes back to the same phase. But so there's repetitive themes. Um, you can look at any yeah. Capricorn star point period and say, okay, what do each of these Capricorn star point periods have in common every four years? What do yeah. each of these Scorpio star point periods have in common every four years? And so there's a lot of information here if you really want to delve deeply into this um both yes, that's right these videos here on the cia channel and a website and also the ones on the youtube uh being and star all, point they've all been discounted because they've passed and stuff so anyway have a look on the yeah, website yeah. for that um there is an introduction um that we did back in um, 2017, a lot to do with the mechanics and the cycle of Venus. So have a look on the CIA YouTube channel for, it's called the Venus Introduction, uh, Venus Star Introduction. Um, again, Ariel's got um, her own website to look at. You know, there, there's a lot of free content out there as well. But in the masterclasses, we tend to gather all the information that we we don't we can't put into there. Again, it's going to take five hours or so for us to go through it. So um, just keep that in mind as well. If you're not so you know understanding of everything the Venus Star is, let's say, doing, because it's quite incredible. <laughs> Um, so this is the current Venus star as as we um, as we have her, you know, making her points in the sky. Um, every nine and a half months, there's a there's a point, um, the inner conjunction, the retrograde, and then nine and a half months later, the outer point. Um, and then, you know, once let's just say this Libra star point, the point before that was the retrograde of of Venus that we had in Capricorn okay um and then we're really right... still under the influence of that now yeah. yes and we've often talked about that sort of combination of from Capricorn to the Libra star point we've got a particular theme going on haven't we and we've really yeah. seen a year where um you know things come to mind from the Capricorn star point like things like um uh what's that tennis player's name who um you know, refused to um, Novak Djokovic, Djokovic who's, who's star, the star point was right on his ascendant. And you could sort of tell that there was something big going to happen with him. And he, you know, he, he was kicked out of Australia because he refused to be vaccinated in order to play for the tennis, um, the tennis open and relinquish, you know, pretty much his title that he's won there for, you know, many, many years. Um, so that's, you know, been and the most interesting part of that was not only was it on his ascendant, the current Venus star point in Capricorn, but it was it was making sort of a finger of God pattern, a yod finger of God pattern to Mercury, Jupiter, right. um, yes. which were all connected at the 18 degree point. And Mercury and Jupiter are really about travel and immigration and moving into yes. foreign countries and all that. And I thought, this is just so specific. This yes. is, you know, yeah. when Venus hits, when the Venus star hits something in your chart and, you know, activates, you know, like um, a domino effect, bing, 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 um, all these different points. Uh, you feel it. There's just really something going on. Yeah. It's got a special heartbeat, as you often call it, of its own, you know, that sort of, um, I always talk about the Venus star points as connecting the rest of the story going on in the astrology of any particular time in your own 
personal chart or, you know, as we see in transits. Um, and we've had this incredible, um, you know, there were so many like litigious, um, you know, court cases, big court cases happening, you know, throughout the year as well. You know, not not only, you know, Roe Road versus Wade, what was it called? Wade. Um, Roe v. Wade. Roe yeah. v. Wade. And then yeah. also, you know, Johnny and, um, you know, his, his divorce. Amber and, and Johnny. And, yeah. and, you know, so we had these yeah. huge, big, um, but also I remember writing at the end of last year on these, this kind of the two star points of 2022, which make 2022 quite unique, um, is that we're going to see a lot of change in governments um, and people, you know, sort of taken down. And we have seen that quite a lot as well. Well, um, and another interesting on one. Point. Yeah. The other interesting one, I mean, there were so many. If I go back, if I did a year-end review before on, on just the Capricorn star point in terms of what's happened this year, it's amazing how many examples we've yeah. had because yeah. it's about power and it's about fame and it's about position and mm -hmm. it can either elevate you to a higher position or it can actually bring you down. And Prince Andrew, I believe, Prince has Andrew, another one, his yeah. Saturn at 18 Capricorn or very close to it. And uh, this star point was right on it. And he was stripped of many of his duties. I, was he stripped also of his uh, title? Um, but yeah, many yeah. things happened earlier in this year connected to uh, that court case or, or if they settled out of court, I'm not sure, but... But that was a big thing, you know, for the son of the queen to be, you know, to be. Uh, so what I'm saying about when when it hits you, it can be, and especially with Capricorn, the, the power and the authority that he once had is now, you know, been diminished. And that's the other side of Capricorn. It's like you're in public, you're in you're in the limelight, you're, you're holding up the world, you're, you're yes. a leader with respect, and then suddenly it fall shifts. from grace. Yeah. You know, the, the, the time you're, you're a tumbling icon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then as we sort of transition to the next star point, they, you know, kind of overlap and the themes are there. Now, what we're seeing a lot of is, you know, we're heading from a Scorpio point to a Libra point. Um, you know, the, the changing of alliances, um, the, the changing of, you know, people and who they're teaming up with, let's say, um, or ready to sort of, let's say, do more. I see this sort of move from Scorpio to Libra is very much about, you know, what have we become so entrenched about and we need to sort of, you know, go back over or, you know, lighten up. How do you see that sort of shift from Scorpio to Libra in a nutshell? I know that's a big one we're going to talk about for the yeah. master class, but. Well, this is the thing that when I was first working on this material that got me the most excited about the changing of the star point, because if it was happening the other way, I yes. might be more fearful, but it was happening this way which if you look at these five star points, you're going to see three of the five are signs that have Mars as either the ruler of, or mm -hmm. it's exalted in Capricorn. It's mm -hmm. a ruler of Scorpio. It's a ruler of Aries. And so three of the five are Martian dominated. And I had been thinking about our culture even way before I discovered the Venus star and wondered why is every thing you see now in media and entertainment and everywhere around you, swords clashing and blood and so much violence, yeah. up mm -hmm. and monster movies, scary things. You know, when we were children, okay, monster movies, a little bit shadow coming out of the dark, ah, you know, but now slash, 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 and they'll go on it for 10 minutes, you know, slash, yeah. slash, slash, yeah, yeah. and screaming beyond belief. And so I was thinking, how did our culture and the video game thing with all the killing and the shooting and the 
you know, get so empowered. One thing that these five star points do to a cultural level is because Venus rules values. And in our personal life, it's our personal values. But in a system like this, it's cultural values. And it's, it the, it's the empowerment of those particular industries or energies that are connected to a certain sign. So we saw a lot of Martian military spending over the top, you know, just out of control, basically, at mm. least in the U.S. Oh, I don't know about other countries, but mm. but military, you know, build up, build up, build up. Um, and, you know, all this Martian stuff. So what we're getting with the change of Scorpio, a Mars ruled sign moving into Libra, a Venus ruled sign, is finally Venus is on her own star. And in our lifetime, that really hasn't happened. You have to be, yeah. uh, you have to be almost 90 years to 100 years old right now, alive, to have witnessed um, a Venus world sign on the star point. That would have been Taurus, which terminated yeah. in the Taurus. late 20s, early yeah. 30s. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, very, very interesting to contemplate that sort of move from, you know, the depth of Scorpio, the and you know, moving out somehow, lightening up or changing the dynamic, definitely. <laughs> so this is it's certainly gonna change it in relationship too. I mean like well, yeah, relationships listen. in so many ways. Re relationships yeah. to um again, I keep thinking about, you know, what we've just you know, gone too deep into and we kind of need to get out. Even, you know, the debts that, that we carry or the way the world is set up, you know, economically, all kinds of stuff is is sort of in that for me. Um, but this is the beautiful rose pattern that Venus makes and then, of course, the five star points around the zodiac um, and just another kind of version of seeing that. When we see the, the yellow, this is the next, you know, sort of eight, star points that happen and they go from the outer conjunction to the retrograde out retrograde out again retrograde so the next so we have this libra star point at 29 degrees coming up um but the one in four years time will be a retrograde but it dips back to zero scorpio um so just to keep that in mind we have got one more in scorpio before then in 20 2030 the next um, star point will be in Libra again at 27, I think it is. So it oscillates around those those places somewhat. So, um, and this is um, Ariel, your your slide on, of course, again the same kind of thing. Anything you want to add to to this? Well, I think um, what this slide can show you is not only the five star points, but as far as the, the actual how Venus moves, like if you start down here at Gemini number one, um, let's say in the in the morning star, the retrograde 2020 retrograde cycle of, of Gemini, the next one, which is 1.6 years later, was early 22, and that was in Capricorn. And then, you know, the next one, number three yeah. uh Making the 18 pension. months later will be yeah. in leo retrograde and then comes back to aries and then instead of scorpio it's libra you know yeah. but now but but the retrograde four years from now will come back dip back to scorpio and that's the other thing we are in a transition we're not in libra to stay in 2022 we're just peeking into libra for the first time I think we have another slide on that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here you can see, you know, like here's a bigger picture. If you're looking at the star against your own chart, this is a 40 year pattern. So you can see how it's slowly moving and coming back to almost the same spot it hit before, but just two degrees back in the zodiac. So one house of yours or one sign, you know, is going to be. Um, you know, that drum beat or that heartbeat, um, every four years, it's going to come back to that place. And it's, it's going to uh, activate whatever's going on for you with that house. 
Yeah, and I mean, a lot of the work we've done, of course, is always, you know, tracking, you know, some people have their son, you know, you might have your son at 29 Libra, you know, you've had the star kind of getting very close and you would have felt it, you know, over the four year pattern. Um, and it's also very important to then look back when a star point comes along back to the four year and eight year pattern that has been, let's say, developing in that area of your chart, which is just so fascinating, um, you know, with the work yeah. that, that we've all done done with that. So anyway, um, you know, go and check your star points, so to speak. So it's a um, very good life review. Isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, like to do it from, from it's birth. Almost yeah. like it's punctuation points in your life. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, the many times that we've we've kind of talked about um, you know, star points that maybe move across the descendant or, you know, the 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 midheaven and the kinds of things that that happen, of course, you know, um relationship changes, meeting the love of your life, um, divorces, all kinds of stuff happen around here you know all the things that we know about astrology on the midheaven you're you know you're again it's very much about that sort of you've reached the top or you're falling back down again or something like that um so you've got to see your own pattern though don't you Ariel because yeah. where we're heading now um astrologers have always made much more attention to the retrograde of a you know of venus right as being yeah um, yeah much more significant but again um you know the studies i've done that i find this outer point as significant when venus she's about to let's say go behind the sun in in, in mm -hmm. a week or so mm -hmm. and disappear yeah. and she disappears for about you know 60 to 80 days sometimes now when Venus is retrograde, of course, she's closer to the Earth. She disappears for about 8 to 12 days. So this star point on the outer side, um, I say it's it's as important as Venus retrograde because Venus is keeping time with the sun for the longest time. It's almost mm -hmm. like for, for about 40 days, they are moving very closely together like within yeah. five degrees of each other. So it is like a kind of a, you know, again, they're, they're, they're making pace because Venus overtakes the sun. So she's moving very fast. Um, but it's. Yeah. Again, and I compare that to two, point. I compare that to two cars on a highway that right. are, one's trying to overtake the other, but they're both going about the same speed, but yeah. one's only going, let's say one or two miles faster than the other. It's going to take a long time, long time to clear yeah. the path of the other. And when Venus is moving direct and moving almost the same distance as the sun, it does take longer. So for her to clear, you know, clear out off. Of That's the right. bright yeah. light of the sun <laughs> for you to be able to see her in the sky. Um, and I also, also think that such a romantic notion that the evening star conjunction what produces the evening star which is the superior conjunction that venus and the sun are staying in their embrace a much much longer time yeah and she's much slower to to move away from that and be on her own and to show herself whereas in the morning star they're they're coming at each other they're having a powerful encounter she's continuing this way the sun's continuing that way and so she, the yeah. reason she's such so short in disappearance is because she clears that shadow of the sun very quickly. Mm -hmm. And and she's visible in the morning star, sometimes uh, shockingly quickly. Yeah. You know, she you think, pops oh my gosh, very Venus quickly. is already up. That's you know? right, yeah. <laughs> she pops down and then she's up again very quickly. So it's just something to really keep in mind that, that this kind of, let's say, sequence or... or Venus riding with the sun for so long is really quite a significant um, part of her, part of her, or, you know, her whole cycle. So um, again, and, the, and then that heartbeat that it's just every four, oh, hang on, where do I go? Sorry. Every, um, every four years, you know, we will have the out, a point either here or there. Every eight years it will return to the retrograde point every four years um, it will will be on the opposite side. So again, these five points are reiterated 
just endlessly um, in your own astrology. Um, now, just, um, just to reflect, this is one Venus cycle and she's about to disappear over here now behind the sun for 80 days or oh, 60 to 80 days, depending on where you are. But the important thing is about the one full cycle is that it's 1.6 years. Um, and without getting too much into that, again, there's many videos that have been done. And in the symposium coming up, Gemini Brett's going to do put together some, as he does, amazing sort of work and graphics and videos to do with um, this, this um, incredible 1.6 year ratio of Venus's cycle. So um, keep that in mind. Um, as we know, the five cycles happen in eight years. So the 5.8, you know, uh, translates to a 1.6 ratio. And that can be seen in not just what I'm talking about here, but in many facets of the Venus cycle. Um, again, it's just so fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> you know, when we think about how this relates to creation on earth um, and that every, you know, star point is nine and a half, you know, months apart as well, um, you know, to the bigger mechanics and the timing of the Venus cycle of, you know, 250 years, let's just say for the Venus star to be a complete circle um, of the Zodiac. So um, anyway, anyone, you, anything you want to add here, Ariel, because again, this, you know, I don't well, want to spend think, too much time on it. No, we won't spend a lot of time now. But I think if you're into sacred geometry, um, this is where I really connected it when I was working with these, mm. uh, the phi ratio and the divine harmony and the divine, the golden section and everything that we've always been told about harmony and beauty and so forth in, in life and, and in art and in design. Um, is related to the Venus uh, cycle. And so I thought that was really beautiful that Venus really is truly what she's always said to have been, you know, the <laughs> principle of harmony and grace and beauty and all that. Yes. And so uh, that's why you get a picture like this from Botticelli of Venus. And, um, you know, there, there's something so beautiful about the flow of this, you know, and about the you know the the grace and the, uh, the there are the three graces um, the seasons and the you know and she's floating on that shell and I love the idea of her floating on a shell because it's the seashells also <laughs> so many seashells that have that Venus design orbit embedded within them and so well, that is a mistake shell especially. either you know? <laughs> yeah. But if you're really into numbers and sacred geometry and all that, I mean, I think all of astrology basically is sacred geometry. You could say it is because if you start measuring things from all the planets and things, you'll get really interesting things. You, yes. But Venus yes. is the one that produces this, this golden mean, this the high perfect. ratio, this Fibonacci. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So look into that further, everyone, or, or watch some of our other videos and stuff. So, yeah. so this is the, the the chart for the exact time of the Venus star yeah, exactness, let's say, um, 29, 26. Um, she's, the, the point is actually conjunct Homea, and there's an eclipse two days later at two school. Right. <laughs> so um, we're going to get Kaboom. into that a lot more um, <laughs> as we go. I just wanted to point out that that's also, um, there was the degree of the moon for the Aries ingress um, this year, 2022. So, you know, the moon, um, as, as many of you would know, the Aries ingress is a time that we look at for the flavor of a year ahead astrologically. So, you know, she was already very much in part of, you know, of the story of 2022 through that ingress kind of, you know, heralding, you know, what's to come. So um, this is now as, as, we look at the current Venus star um, and these are all the points that she's sort of making in the next, um, you know, four years. Okay. Um, it's the same exactly star that was made in the 1770s 
because for a whole let's let's just say this venus star in libra point for that to do a full circle on its own around the chart or around the zodiac is 250 50 years or it's like 248 250 years very much the same as a pluto cycle so we'll find pluto in the same position um it's quite amazing isn't it so to go back in those bigger time frames of time um the 70s, 1770s were an incredible um age of discovery and invention and exploration um and the things that sort of began then aerial um what um what can you add for for this incredible sort of combination like they're exactly the same aren't they well, Pluto is a 248-year cycle, and the Venus star is actually one-fifth around the whole wheel. It's like when the head star rotates all the way to the next arm, and then that arm becomes the leg, and then that leg is the other leg. So one-fifth of the wheel is actually 251 years. So they're three years apart, but close enough in that type of a number that we're working with yeah, that so type of mathematical value mm -hmm. close enough and um what i found fa fascinating about it is of course everybody these days is talking about the fact that the united states is in the middle of its first ever pluto return um to capricorn but it's also approaching its first ever Venus star point return mm. because it was also born 1776 as we know is the declaration of independence the United States was born with a one degree Scorpio star point and right. in in 2026 when this star point of our current time goes back to uh Heroes. scorpio because mm. it's going to be 29 libra now four years from now zero scorpio four years after that back to libra so it's shifting in this next eight years this is the transition point yeah. so between that eight-year cycle when venus first entered libra back then 250 years ago we had the american revolution and we had the independence from britain and we had, um, uh, you know, a war of independence. And, you know, we can look at Libra as being, and Scorpio for sure, but it was the Libra star, but it was approaching back to the Scorpio star when the fighting actually took place and the declaration was actually made. And so that was the, the breakaway. That was the big breakaway from the British Empire. The colon, you know, the colonies became sort of independent. And um, we, I don't know, not to get too political right now, but I don't know if anybody's tuned into American politics, but we are having a revolution right <laughs> now. We are having a civil war right now. We are having, you know, the whole in thing seems way, to be yeah. breaking mm. down and just, it's so worn out. It's so tired. It's so, it's so not working. And both sides agree that it's not working, but nothing has, nobody's come up with a solution of how to get it working. And it's sort of a breakdown of, because we're repeating a time in history now where the Constitution of the United States, where first of all, we had the revolution and a few years later, we had the Constitution and all of that. And what you know are we even following what's in the constitution anymore the laws seem to be uh, easily breakable by anybody and i think it's time i've said this since i began working with this mm -hmm. 18 years ago that seeing this coming up that i really felt like boy we're we're in this this process now this changeover so what I'm going to show a little bit more of in our um, in our actual uh, workshop panel workshop is um, some of the charts concerning that, some of the timeline, some of the 
things we can anticipate going forward over the next eight years. Yeah, wow, great. That's a very in important <laughs> um, deep dive. I mean, the other thing, you know, um, for Australians is that Australia was discovered at this time as well. So, you know, a Captain Cook um, came and took That's the right. for the for for the you know for the empire. So um, and for the wasn't he there for the Venus transit? In the south, uh, he, it was the Venus transit was in the sixties. He was on his way to Australia. It was like you know ten years earlier, yeah. Or something, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, sorry, not ten. I think the last Venus transit was. Hang on, I've got it on the slide somewhere. Um, seventeen sixty six or something. Okay, um, but I know yeah. Captain Cook played a really big role when I was doing historical research. He played a really big role in the last Venus transit, uh, right. two Venus transits ago, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and also in the, um, I didn't know about the discovery of Australia, then that is really big. Yeah. Well, that's so really, that means it was around country, a long time before that. <laughs> so that probably means Australia is going through its own. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Break well, down and rebuild, rebuilding again. Well, yeah, yeah the, I mean, one of the things that's happening is a real sort of opening up to the um, Aboriginal people of Australia and their role in our, you know, parliament and stuff and having a voice. Um, and, there are, you know, um, you know, it's like kind of unprecedented. So there are sort of good tracks being made in, in a way. Um, yeah, so, you know, it just again very interesting times for us as well um good okay so, great yeah. yes yes and so, that would um, make sense with the discovery of australia to be uh to be this to be kind of um mirroring because you know it's not like australia wasn't already discovered the well, that's what I see. That's were right. there for yeah, a long yeah. time yeah, yeah. but it's sort of like now it's sort of acknowledging that they were there and this is their land and you know what have we yeah. done to them yeah. and where do they belong in history you know this historical shift now yes um you know yeah uh, a lot of people have been calling you know the day of um you know captain cook's landing that we celebrate as australia day as invasion day as well for you know the yeah. last 10 years or so so you know a lot of things to change and necessarily so which is good so let's hope that continues um so now these are the the last points of course that were in this same transition that we're in now again how yeah. significant that is you know for for what's going on um and then we can look at um yeah so look i mean it just repeats and reflects the same thing as with pluto going into aquarius as well we'd be looking at mm -hmm. you know how 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 you know many big changes are up, uh, upon us but of course we're looking at it as the star also doing its thing aren't we <laughs> you yeah. know not just pluto in aquarius so um, right and just a few notes um so that the last star point as we said that happened at 29 libra you know just from wikipedia what an amazing sort of age it was Uranus was discovered, you know, not long after, of course, just before that, the French Revolution. So, you know, it isn't, it's not so hard to kind of think that how much turbulence and chaos is around us at the moment when we put these historical cycles together again. But at the same time, how, how let's say, rapidly, you know, invention and innovation is kind of coming into the picture as well. It's quite yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I just want to pick up um, something. Uh, I just want to go oh, back sorry. to one thing you said on the yeah. last slide. I mean, think about the Industrial Revolution and its impact on the world. And, you know, we do need a new revolution. And, and, and we need to become, we need to be getting away from in this, in what industrial revolution. I when I think of industrial revolution and okay, it produced a lot of great things, but when you think of these black smokestacks yeah. rising into the sky and all this pollution, and, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like, okay, 
I think what Libra really wants coming into this period now is uh, clean air. Yeah, yeah. Clean air, clean water. Um, make the place beautiful again. <laughs> yeah, it wants to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and why not? You know, I mean, beauty, as we know, um, is the what is related to the Greek word for cosmos as well, isn't it? You know, the cosmetics well, and, and the it's, cosmos. It's about and health can... also. It's about health and vitality. Yeah. When somebody is healthy and vital, they have, they, they carry an inner beauty, they carry yeah. an outer beauty, an inner beauty as well. And our earth, you know, it's like this this whole, our skies, when our skies are polluted. Yeah. And A blue, see, yeah, with Libra blue kind of thing. Piles of industrial waste dumps. That's not beautiful, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's the whole thing about how, how our system is structured to be so indebted to produce, to, you know, um, reap resources, to make lots of money. You know, um, again, lightening up from that is a very Libra type of thing. Let's make this work for, you know, or what do you call it? Um, yeah, make alliances that will make this work better instead of being yeah. entrenched in this, you know, sort of deep, dark, you know, mess. Um, Anyway, there's right. a lot to talk about in there. Uh, I just want to point out the the star point that happens in between, so the 1880s, where we have just around the time of the Sagittarian transit point, right? So the Venus transits when Venus crosses the face of the sun um, happen about every 120 years, but they move from Sagittarius to Gemini for about 2,000 years, and then they kind of move off into Capricorn and Cancer and so on. But um, just to know that, you know, this is the other star point that's sort of in the middle, you know, 120 years from, you know, back from now when we had the last point um, that happened in Libra, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the last, you know, until now, you know, that's coming in at 29, We've got had the last point in Libra. Um, and this was an incredible time as well in the sense of um, uh, what, what they called the Gilded Age and a time of, you know, really kind of expansion and growth and skyscrapers that represented that growth in a sense. And, you know, imperialism, like, you know, big time. Um, so, you know, we're kind of, we're at the the other end now. Again, we're we're just after the Gemini point by ten years. So you know mm -hmm. this is this is going back to the. We're kind of in a phase that's much more like as we saw two hundred and fifty years ago, not a hundred and twenty years ago, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But anyway, it's very very interesting to see this on the bigger scale a bigger cycle of this whole Venus star that again I've written about here. Um, on the website if you want to go and have a look but um, again we're very much in this Gemini's timing because we call Gemini the Gemini star point the lead point don't we because the node is there the Gemini mm -hmm. um, nodes that's why the yeah I kind of think of it as that I kind of think of yeah. the of, of whatever star period we're in historically if it's a Gemini period or a Sagittarius, Sagittarius period yeah. that yeah. would be the sort of the lead point because it does actually can conjoin with the south and north nodes of yeah. venus yeah um the other thing i thought was really interesting and i was very much involved in this because i i self-published this book right around the gemini transit of 2000 between 2004 and 2012 and i was part of a larger book group and uh all of uh you know, my books previously, the, the two decades previously, there was all these big bookstores and all these uh, uh, book sales were just, were people hung out in bookstores, they were a really big deal. And suddenly in the Gemini transit, these bookstores started disappearing and digital um, books came in really strong. And of course, Amazon is still really strong, but um, in, in print books, but it it the the results of the Gemini transit 
uh, kind of was threatening the book industry for a long time. So many publishers went belly up. So many small yeah. presses went belly up. Um, and this was a real concern about when, you know, when, what's going to happen to the future of books. And of course, I spoke to the book group one at one time, throwing a little of astrology in, and I said, well, this is what happens. When we were back at the Sagittarius transit in the late 1800s, this was the, the building of libraries and the opening of public libraries everywhere and book publishers began and all these translations and different languages of the different classics, mm -hmm. you know, it's just started to proliferate. And so knowledge with book reading, you know, it's like the Sagittarius transit really empowered learning and, and language and, and this, this sort of thing and book reading and, and, and reading in general. People before that weren't always educated to read, you know? And so everybody became reader. A lot of people became readers. And um, then suddenly um, here we are. And I said to the book group, well, okay, we're, it, it's, getting, it's getting a fierce hit right now, the book industry with this Gemini, because people want short little, you know, tap, tap, text, text, you know, digital media, you know, visual kinds of things, uh, eBooks, this this sort of thing. But I believe that um, when the Libra star comes back in in the in the 2020s, that Libra is going to bring us back to that again. It's going to bring us. Well, there'll be a resurgence. I think there'll be a resurgence in book companies and publishing companies and books that people really want to hold on to and read, you know, mm -hmm. could, okay. I could be wrong on that, but I really feel like <laughs> Libra has to do with that. You know, well, it's, my it's partner, kind of, it's every time sensual. I say Libra, he says, are you reading a book? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the touch and the, you know, the kind of right, beauty exactly. of a book and stuff like that. It's not quite like yeah. a digital file, is it? So, um, yeah, I mean, the internet's got a big sort of focus point of that as well. It only started a few years before the first transit. Um, so this is now the Venus star of the 2020s. And I just want to go back to the transit and just point out, we can see the nodes of Venus there, but also the same point as the node of Uranus. And if we look at this star and then look at the next one, which is the 2020 star, we can see that Venus and the sun points in Gemini are getting closer to Uranus. Now, if you haven't seen our video, we did a, a month or so ago with Gary Kate and Maurice Fernandez on the the North Node conjunct Uranus and the types of astrology that, you know, kind of develops over, over eras. Um, do take a look because um, I really think that this is very much part of the kind of explosion of astrology in the last 10 years or so. Part of it, right? So. Not the only yeah. thing, you know, because Uranus is like the, you know, the the modern ruler of astrology and was born pretty much 250 years ago. And then in the 1880s, as you said, the last, you know, Sagittarius point, that's also when astrology started coming out of that era of being sort of put away for a while with the birth of theosophical society and, you know, um, a lot of kind of practitioners writing and talking about, you know, alchemy and magic and bringing it back into circulation so very interesting <laughs> to look yeah. at this whole thing um look we'll just move this through this quickly because um Ariel's going to go through this section a lot more in her session with us for the symposium but the Venus star shift that have happened you know over over the times I mean this is just an example from Ariel's Venus star PDF if you don't have it it has all the the dates for the last what 120 years 140 years it, well it starts it I think the PDF starts in the 1800s 1850 yes, I think this is the first one yeah and we can oh, see is it 1870 yeah. and it goes um into the mid 2020 yes. uh, mid to yeah the mid so we can see the shifts for you yeah. know from Virgo to Libra taking place 
Um, we had one in the 20s, which is, of course, the first, this Scorpio point that first happened in Scorpio now is moving to Libra and you're going to get more involved with that. Can you tell us, and there was another point that happened that moved from Aries to, uh, sorry, from Taurus to Aries, which started off this whole, you know, two two star points ruled by Mars, really. <laughs> well, um, the thing that hit me when the last star point of Aries hit, the last star point of Taurus was happening and the first star point of Aries occurred in 1929, Yes. There was the Wall Street crash. Yes. And exactly. mm -hmm. I thought that that had a lot to do with Tor the whole 100 year plus cycle of Taurus ending um, with banks Amazing. and investments yeah. and all of that was, was kind of in a flurry. And now we've got the other sign of wealth and money and so forth in Scorpio kind of coming to a termination point. And what's that going to do to yeah. how we exchange currency, how, what kind of currency we yeah. exchange? There's been so much crypto. There's been other kinds of investment things happening on the side and a, and a desire to kind of get away from the big banks um, and how we do trading, how we do bartering. I think Libra is more of a bartering kind of system. Um, a fair exchange, fairer, of, from, a fairer a, exchange, a fairer exchange, yes. yeah. yeah, which is you know something to really look forward to because it's gone so out of whack. These, you know, the yeah. bankers they get away with so much as we know, so that's really really interesting. I, I can't wait to hear more about that. Um, and then we had one during the 60s, of course, from Gemini to no, sorry, from Cancer to Gemini and the wild 60s. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, changing our minds about so many things and talking about it and you know, expressing ourselves. Um, you know, interesting backdrop also to so many other things that were happening, happening astrologically there. That's why we love the star, don't we? Because it's got so much more information for us um, about certain eras. Um, and then this, is this the latest one? Yeah, these are the last ones we've had. So we haven't had a Venus star shift since, you know, the 18th, the late 1980s um any comments about that particular era the 80s or the um, late 80s when these two shifted yeah yeah i mean we left Aquarius and went into capricorn and um i i think it's uh we had a the 80s were very conservative politically we had margaret thatcher in britain we had ronald reagan in the united states we had um this interest in what I would say when we left Virgo and we left um, Aquarius and went into Capricorn and Leo, yeah. their corporations particularly, this is the point I want to underline, corporations particularly started partnering with the government and they started becoming more interested in taking care of their shareholders than they did their employees. Yeah. And so all of the ways that in the 70s and before that that you used to want to be part of a big company and you used to want to be part of that family because it was like more of a family you got pensions you got um certain kinds of insurance you got all these different kinds of benefits and you and your family could you could feel somewhat secure there and suddenly all of that went away. It was sort of like, no, we don't care about our workers anymore. Well, it was big money, big finance, big, you know, yeah. big, big production. We're, we're, paying, yeah. we're concerned about our shareholders. And so basically this, the value system changed where those in charge decided we're going to reward our shareholders and not yeah. our employees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And overall, I mean, this is what we're kind of seeing as we are approaching the star point. And there's another, and this is the shift here now, um, is, yeah, the values are going to, let's say, um, ride the change, uh, sorry, um, promote the change, aren't they? The values that we hold. And we've been so 
so disillusioned by the big systems that, you know, govern us that, you know, over the past that, um, you know, it's time for that change. And we are seeing those happening here and there, aren't we, in so many mm -hmm. ways. It, you know, however kind of slow and frustratingly slow it seems, it is happening. So let's have faith in that <laughs> for the next, you know, star points of, of shifts. And then we're going to have another shift from the Aries point to Pisces, but that's only in 2040. So interesting times ahead, Ariel, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's another Venus-related sign, Pisces, because we've got yeah. the exaltation of Venus in Pisces. So yeah. Yeah. Um, we're slowly moving on the star wheel towards a little bit more Venus coming in and the diminishing of Mars. So it yeah. is going to change the way people yeah. relate to one another, definitely, yeah. and how we do business and how we prosper it, yeah. it's not just a me it's not going to be just a me me kind of um era it's going to be i can't win unless you know you win as well it's yeah. got to be a win-win for both yeah well you know um it's also interesting i think the star point going past zero aries as well or hovering in that area you know, over this kind of transition time. So watch this space. As we know, zero Aries is a very, you know, important cardinal point. Um, and that's only 11 years away, uh, that that point. And yeah. the, the point you make about that is that it, you mentioned the 60s when we went from zero Cancer to 29 Gemini. Um, that was the 60s with the right. last time the Venus star hit a cardinal point. Uh, the no next point, time no. is the 2030s yeah. when it hits the Aries point. Yes. So get ready, guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't hit zero Capricorn yet because it's going back to that. And it hasn't hit zero, um, what's the other one? Libra, that'll Libra. be a long oh, that time. that will be at the end of this. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, right. very, very powerful. So um, just kind of wrap up a bit. I might leave this to talk more because, Ariel, we've already gone for an hour. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, maybe, <laughs> you know, have we already done the, the thing? Or, <laughs> no, we've got more to say. We do have well, more there is say. more to say about this chart, but I might leave it for the next session. But, um, you know, it's a really interesting chart. Just let's have your two, you know, kind of, um, words about this there's some really significant things happening um, Saturn is stationing <laughs> um, Mars is stationing it doesn't look like it but he's about to go retrograde in that same degree a few you know a week later or so um, you know Jupiter at the zero point the cardinal point as well yeah um, you know about to go back to you know Pisces again the star point, of course, squaring Pluto. I mean, these are all the things we're going to sort of delve a lot deeper into in the personal charts that I do for the session for the symposium. Um, and Gemini, I remember, I'm sure we'll talk about it in part two, but the bi exact biquintile to Neptune, which is, of course, you know, um, the, the 72 degrees of the Venus separation points to you know, like a, sorry, um, from one retrograde to the next or from, you know. 144 degrees, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's an interesting, you know, connection to, um, you know, Neptune there as well. Um, something, you know, quite sort of magical and mysterious to be involved with all of this as well. I think we'll be, we'll actually see some, quite a few surprises around that time as well. I mean, that's we're talking about a bigger sort of influence of this chart, you know, and the meaning of the this first Venus star point in Libra. But there's a lot more um, yeah. behind it, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, and I'm interested to hear what Kelly has to say about Hamea because I haven't worked with Hamea much and uh, or at all, really. So I can't comment on that, but there it is right on the star point. That's right. I well, think why the thing that really jumped out um, about this chart for me 
uh, was the fact that Jupiter is at zero Aries on the cardinal point, and the moon that day will shift into zero Libra. So you will have two cardinal points um, already yeah. activated um, on the day of the Venus star point. Yes, there's a lot there. Uh, and also, um, uh, what am I seeing there? Yeah, again, the, there's an eclipse two days later. So it's also coming into that eclipse season. Right. So, right. you know, it's going to be a real highlight time anyway. Um, yeah. But I did have a chat to um, Kelly, just a 10 minute chat, which I will just slot in here now about the the meaning of Homia and the Venus star point for 2022. So we'll listen to that yeah. now. Okay, good. Hi again, everyone. This is a recording that um, we made just a bit earlier um, as Kelly Hunter couldn't join us for the live event. So uh, thank you so much for, for you, Kelly, to join us now to have a little look at what your part of the symposium is going to be. Um, something a lot of people, you know, the topics they don't get into. So, so thanks so much. Tell us a little bit about your segment for our Venus Star Libra Symposium. Absolutely. Well, it's very exciting to me. I mean, the whole Venus cycle has been increasingly fascinating to me. And, you know, the part of it I haven't gotten into as deeply is the second, the second Venus star when she's on the far side of the sun. Right. And yeah. that's why I'm really, really interested in this and also feel like, you know, between the, the what we call interior conjunction and the exterior conjunction, it's kind of like a heartbeat. It's like, put up, put up, you know, it's like, put up or something like that. Cause we have that, that heartbeat. So yeah, I, very I much so. call that too. And, and so this one especially grabbed my attention when I first looked at it and saw that it was exactly conjunct Haumea. Uh -huh. I mean, almost to the minute, but it, certainly in the same degree. And, you know, that's been part of my, uh, my research in the last number of years is the Kuiper Belt and what the Kuiper Belt is about, you know, being named for mostly indigenous creator gods from all around the world and a few underworld gods to move through to get there. And um, the one that is conjunct is Haumea, that is many people's one of their favorites because she is just glorious. She is the Hawaiian goddess of childbirth. Yeah, and wow. Yeah. Over the past several years, she's been squaring Pluto. They've been in a kind of a long-term square for quite a while. And uh, the, the square um, to, from Pluto that's affecting this particular and rare, right, Venus yeah, star. Yeah, and rare because Homia moves slower than Pluto, right? So they're yes. both very double the time, really, isn't it? Yes. About, yeah. Yes. And they're both about to change sign. We know Pluto is changing right. sign in March into Aquarius. And in November already, that's just a couple of months, Haumea is stepping into Scorpio for just a few months. So and the star so point and Haumea are changing, you know, changing positions in a way. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, they're both moving into another sign in square. Right. And yes, the Venus goes back. So this is like a special meeting when, you know, Haumea is heading forward and Venus is heading backward. Yeah. So that's another really exciting element to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so what does that mean, you know, to a what a confab, a what a, a meeting of goddesses here, yeah. uh, this special moment. And so uh, I want to get into discussing, um, you know, what does it mean uh, that how what does Haumea mean? What do these Kuiper Belt objects mean to me? I really think they represent a new level of consciousness. It's like like the outer planets represented a new level of consciousness. This is another step up. Yeah, wow. And, um, I think of it as quantum. You know, the quantum is being used all over the place now, you know, in sciences and, and all sorts of other references, including consciousness. So, you know, what does that mean? And what is Haumea's contribution to that as a goddess of childbirth? 
And for a while now, I've been wondering, like, how how does Homea make it, you know, decide what she's going to give birth to? Like, you know, like, how does a woman's body d d decide what semen she's taken in, you know, oh. and and I, well, I that was already yeah. a big topic, you know, in the US this year, wasn't it? <laughs> With the Roe versus Wade, um, you know, story. In a way, it's already play, playing out somehow. Yeah. yeah so when does actually life begin? So, um, and I realized too that question I had: How does she decide? Is actually a very Libra question. Uh -huh. So, when in the Scorpio, that question might be, it might might change. <laughs> oh, how interesting! Yeah. I mean, I've been thinking a lot about you know what does it mean for the star point to um you know move back from Scorpio after all of us having it in our lives in Scorpio for you know the last 120 140 years or 120 years um and now it moves back to Libra so we've all got you know collectively something going on from the places we've gone into deep the places we've been entrenched and can't get out of the places where Ooh. you know we've been too indebted or something so it is a lightening up somehow to realign things isn't it within her rulership yeah yeah maybe one of these higher consciousness goddesses something really special is going on here and and you know when when how may is with venus no doubt giving birth to beauty and abundance and love is part of it and perhaps new partnerships i want to kind of think about that a little yeah. bit yeah I think that's a really big theme new partnerships and alliances you know overall you know again we've already seen that I always say that the star point is always active before it comes like an eclipse we can feel the energy of what's to come so it's a culmination point and we'll 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 have its effects as as the other one comes in from leo next year next august so they're all connected you know we we're isolating this star point the libra star point because we love researching you know from all the different facets from adam from yourself from ariel from gemini and from myself all the things that we kind of thought of as we we've, we've been um developing and researching the star point over years so i hope everyone can join us um for the extended version of this um and of course kelly's amazing work with the kuiper belt objects um and just quickly kelly so how mia and the star point also square pluto um, as, you said, yeah, as they move and that goes back to how we started this year right 22 with with venus having met up with pluto and going retrograde and yep. not moving back up with Pluto until what early March, and Mars was there with Venus together with Pluto, and Mercury had already visited yeah. Pluto. Yeah, so yeah. This is extraordinary, and yeah. I think that prepared us for what we're about to experience, like a new level of partnership, perhaps. Yeah. Because you know we really had to process a lot to answer that journey to the underworld. And to have Mars and Venus meet up empowered and then moving into Aquarius together to help continue to open this new era we're moving into. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, at the same time, and it, it is has been such a Mars Venus year as they coupled up for such a long time, as you said earlier in the year. Um, but of course, they're rulers of the node, the nodal axis. And of course, That's just great. a few days after the the star point is an eclipse in scorpio so right. again we've got these real you know venusian but also martian themes that are just wow. really presenting themselves like you know you know very strongly so um, my my segment for for the sessions is going to be different from the day where the four of you get together um, I'm going to get the group or who can make it at the time and we're going to look at each other's charts and discuss so it's like the personal journey to look at you know what the Venus star shift means for us 
Okay, so we're going to have discussion and look at, you know, a few example charts. So I really hope you can join us because of, you know, the quality um, experience you'll have with these great astrologers, Ariel, Adam Gainsbourg, um, Gemini Brett, and the wonderful Kelly Hunter. Thanks yeah. for doing this with us. And we really look forward to um, the 2nd of October when we can get yeah. the loop down. All right. Yes, I'm looking forward to it too. And I so appreciate the invitation. Thanks a lot, Kelly. So make sure everyone have a look at the program. Um, and of course, do book in um, for the whole event. We'd love to see so, you. Um, so as we, just before we finish, um, this is like, again, if you want to know more about you know, again, this incredible cycle, not just only the Venus star cycle, but also just every cyanotic cycle, like every 584 day journey, um, then, you know, follow us on social media. We have an incredible magazine called Time Lords that for the last, this has been our fourth, uh, I was going to say episode, fourth um, uh, release and in all of them, I've talked about, you know, some aspect of the Venus star cycle and Venus um, phases. So do have a look there. There's all these diagrams are in there as well. So you can do more study. But um, we're about to, let's just say, um, here we have on September the 15th is, you know, let's say it's a roundabout date in a way when Venus will disappear behind the sun. Okay, so that's our kind of next part of the journey. And on the way to this point, she's had seven waning moon gates of the descent into the underworld, often misunderstood as the descent into the retrograde. Again, as we explained earlier, very kind of, you know, quick transition. We see her, she's in the night sky, and then she pops down and comes back in the morning sky. So, um this outer transition is known as the, the Inanna in the underworld because it takes her seven months to get there. So, again, I've written about that in Time Lord. So if you want to sort of take the steps and look into that cycle, it's, I mean, a lot of people do it now, which is just gorgeous following, you know, the moon and Venus conjunctions in the evening sky, uh, sorry, in the morning sky. And then you do it again in the evening sky when she reappears um, and she's only coming back around the end of October. Uh, sorry, end of November. Okay, so this is now the time, the time that then we look for her again um, as she re reappears in the evening sky um, and then gets higher and higher and higher over seven months to come out of the underworld. So, um, you know, I don't want us to think about, you know, that we're all going to the underworld <laughs> in this phase because... It's an incredible, if you look back at your own cycle, you may find that these have been incredible times of self-empowerment, um, changing something really quite radical in your life um, in regard to relationships, career, um, or, you know, various other things. You have to look at where that, that point is of 29 Libra for yourself and then look back at the cycle, four years and eight years cycle to really get your story. Um, so all these graphics are there for you to use um, in Time Lords magazine. Um, and before we go, um, we also, and Ariel, I wish you would be here for this, but I know you've got a very busy September <laughs> um, traveling again. <laughs> I'll be at Omega in New York to do um, the premiere of the Venus Star Point yes. Libra so, workshop weekend um, in September, but then I'll be with you in early October to do the panel. So those are the two big yes. events um, and there will be several others uh, other ones in between yeah yeah and in melbourne victoria just 90 minutes out of melbourne we're having a magic of the cosmos retreat all based around um, venus and at the, at the weekend of the venus star point which happens at i think 8 17 in the morning on the sunday morning here in australia so we've got a really amazing program lined up um we've got um alex trenoworth visiting from the UK we, who will be doing some family dynamic um, astrology I'll be doing some more Venus star work we've got some magic 
coming up with some of the girls and making potions and timing it with the planetary hours and the rising and culminating of Venus. So you're going to learn a lot if you come um, and we really um, would love to see you there. So um, all of this is also part of you can get discounts for the symposium coming up, the Venus Symposium or the retreat if you are a CIA member. And now we have an incredible um, monthly payment system so it makes it easier to belong and you get um, a 20% discount. Um, for this webinar, uh, sorry, for this symposium coming up, and we've got an early bird, Ariel. Make sure you tell everyone there's an early bird of 20% off for this symposium, which makes it $96 um, uh, and an extra 20% for, for uh, CIA members. So really great reasons to join us. All come to this, you know, because it's going to be incredible. I can't wait to hear what all the agents have to add to our session there. So thanks, Ariel, for um, okay. joining well, me for that you. today. Um, it, was it was always a really longer session than we you, longer yeah. session than we yeah. thought. But again, such an interesting topic. Um, so good luck with your travels, Ariel. Um, Thank you for, to Amiga and New York and back to America. Um, and we will see you on the second, beaming in yes. from. Where you, you'll be in your home, uh, old I'll home. I'll be in now. Santa Fe, New Mexico at that point. Yeah. Okay, um, right. So it'll, my old hometown. And um, so I look forward to uh, being with all of you then. It's always a great pleasure to be in one of these masterclass symposiums with the CIA and Venus Star. So thank you all for tuning in. Thanks, Ariel, and thanks, everyone. Hope to see you there. Um, get in touch and do book in. See you soon.